Testing, testing, la la la. Hey guys, if you don't remember me, I'm Jolene and I'm so sorry that it's been so long since I've talked to you guys. A lot of things have changed. You can see some of them right away. My hair is now green and eight inches shorter, which I'm so glad that I did. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. Initially, when I started doing favorites, I was hoping to do seasonal ones, but I've noticed my last favorites was in the summer. So I guess everything from June till now I'm including so let's get right in I want to start with beauty products first up is coconut oil I know a lot of people talk about it but this is just the greatest product it's been so good to me since I've gotten it you really don't have to buy any special coconut cream or body oil or anything like that please save your money and just go to Whole Foods you can get any kind of cooking coconut oil just make sure it's unrefined cold-pressed extra virgin and organic. When it's unrefined and cold pressed, this allows you to use the product on your hair and your skin without a greasy residue as opposed to the one from say Trader Joe's, you'll get that greasy film. But now that it's winter, the fatty properties of this have made it solidify in room temperature. So I just grab a little bit, warm it up in my fingers and it melts right away. I use this for my hair after I take a shower as a leave-in conditioner or I use it on my skin. Next up are these glitter hair gels. I love them so much. One thing about me is that I love anything glittery or shimmery or sparkly. A lot of people hate it, but it's probably one of my favorite things in life. I got the glittery silver gel because it's so universal and they also sent this gold one with pink sparkles. First time I used it, I made two buns and put it on my part. I also want to try putting it on my eyebrows or the front part of my hair or also the hairline here. So we'll see how that goes. Next for beauty is this Rodin Oilio Luso hair oil. It's quite expensive, but I think it's definitely worth the money. You just use a little bit on your fingers and run it through your hair and it makes a huge difference. I tend to have frizzy coarse hair after I shower or when my hair gets dry. So a lot of my products help tame frizz and kind of weigh it down a little bit. So I would definitely suggest this for someone who at least has wavy hair. Straight or thick hair is fine, but maybe if you have fine hair, I would stray away from this. But other than that, this has been a holy grail product. I don't know what I would do without it. Last for beauty is this little tiny adorable cute set that ColourPop sent me. There were three of them, but I think this one is my favorite. It comes with colors that they don't have the large size of, including Times Square, Bianca, and my new favorite red one called Fastlane. These are perfect for just throwing in your bag or when you need to pack something for traveling, it comes in really handy. And although they're really small, they give a great amount of product. Over the last six months, I've bought two of my favorite pairs of sunglasses. The first is from The Row, which as you may know is Mary Kate and Ashley's designer line. These are just really simple large aviators. They remind me of the giant circle Ray-Bans that everyone and their mom got, but I wanted to opt for something a little bit different. I love how round and simple they are. It has a thin minimal tortoise frame and leather accents on the stem, so I've really grown to love these. Next are these Acne Studio sunglasses I got. I really love the case, by the way, because it's not a huge hard shell one that I have to just keep in the back of my closet. It's actually a case that I can use for any sunglasses in any bag. These are the Mustangs in pink. It has a unique retro shape with rose-colored tint, and the frame is this pink marbled semi-iridescent print, and it's just super cute to wear to spice up any outfit. Like sometimes when I wear all black, which I really don't mind doing, sometimes I prefer it. I just feel somewhat uncreative, but I feel like adding something like this to an outfit just will make it. Now on to bags. First is my new Cara backpack. Uh, they call this the lavender small backpack, but I believe it's more powder blue. But maybe I'm colorblind and don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyways, I finally decided to get one of these, and the small backpack actually carries just the right amount of items without being too big. 
Um, this is what it looks like inside. I should probably do an updated what's in my bag, maybe one for work or like on a weekend. So it has this zipper and this back pocket. This is usually where I keep my phone for easy access or it'd be a good idea to put your wallet if you're traveling. This is definitely one of my favorites. Next is this foldover clutch that I received from New Classics. This is another silhouette that I've had my eye on forever and I finally got my hands on my favorite one. Really easy to just carry around. It looks super great with any outfit. Again, I love how much this can hold and you just roll it over and it easily snaps back in place. And New Classics is one of my favorite online retailers. It's actually one of my friends that owns and does everything for the site. They carry some really great brands and everything is ethically sourced and made so you can buy everything from the site guilt-free. Last for bags is this building block bag. This is another bag I've had my eye on for a while and I finally took the plunge and got it. I've wanted a staple bucket bag for a while and I found this to be the perfect size for going out or carrying just the essentials. One of my favorite things about this bag is this wooden ball on the end of the strap. You can either put it on this side for your shoulder, but I chose to string it down over here by the holes. And I also bought one of these tassels from Building Block. You can choose from all these different tassels and accessorize and customize your bags however you want. I decided these would be a great fit for my bag. So I just wear it crossbody and yeah, I love this guy. Now on to homewares. Two of my favorite pieces I've gotten from Celetti Toilet Paper is this plate. Um, it's just simple, quirky, and makes eating fun. It's also great for photographing if you're one of those people that likes taking pictures of food, which I am guilty of, then this is a great accessory for your photos. Another of my favorites from toilet paper is this mirror that I put in my bathroom so I can get a little bit closer to the mirror. I love the artistic angle behind it and it's functional and beautiful. Now on to candles. My favorite favorite has to be this spirit lamp candle by Dia Durga. It's this really beautiful candle that comes in a peach glazed glass and I love the label design as well. Again, it has one of the most unique scents I've ever smelled. I love candles that have really complex scents that are layered on top of each other. It's one of those smells that when you take a whiff, you don't automatically know what it is. I have to redo the description of the scent because I feel like it adds so much character to what the candle is. Spirit Lamp. Tea service in the colonial parlor of Madame Revere, topless psychic. Hot silver heated by open flame. Bohia Vapors Radiant Heat Milk. I think that description is just beautiful and it makes me love the scent even more. Next is this really cute copper tumbler because who doesn't love a copper tumbler? It's just this all-purpose cup. You can use it for drinking, storing things, having it as an object on a shelf, and just whatever you please. Put anything in it, do what you want, have it on display, don't. It just brightens up any scene that you add it to. Lastly for housewares is my ultimate favorite planter, this guy. I love the tan lines on it. I love the boobies. Um, unfortunately, I kill all plants that are not succulents. I believe this was a succulent too. It's dead, so sorry that's gross. I need to replace it, yes. But the planter, so cute. It's ceramic, also from Need Supply, so I'll link that down below. I have a miscellaneous one that didn't fit into any categories, really. It's a vintage Gianni Versace scarf. It's just a little square guy that I usually tie around my neck, or you can use it as a hair tie. I got it for $1 at my work sample sale. Thank the vintage gods for that. Now on to what I've been watching. My first favorite is hands down Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot is a series that was on USA. It's a psychological thriller that centers around the protagonist named Elliot. I would describe Elliot as a modern day Holden from Catcher in the Rye. He's a slightly disturbed man that has somewhat of a protector complex. He's this crazy talented and genius hacker that can basically hack any system. So he uses these talents to help the people around him and protect the people that he loves. Aside from a super intriguing plot, 
Some of the things that really suckered me in for this series is the filming and the cinematography. I would compare it to Kubrick's work. Some of the camera angles are definitely reminiscent of The Shining and Clockwork Orange, which just makes it so much more horrific and creepy, if that makes sense. In addition to that, the music and score is just amazing. When describing the series to a friend, I compared it to Drive and Nightwalker which is another one of my favorites that I mentioned in my last video. But after doing a little IMBD research, which I always do when I fall in love with something, I found that it's the same person doing the score for Drive and American Horror Story. And in one of the episodes, they featured explosions in the sky and FKA twigs in one episode, and that was when I was like, I'm done, this is my favorite thing ever. So I would highly recommend checking that out. Another watch is a series I mentioned before, which I'm sure many of you currently watch, but it's the fourth season of American Horror Story featuring Lady Gaga. Of course I have to watch because it's based in downtown LA, which is where you're looking at. The hotel that it's based off of is a couple blocks away from my house, which is kind of creepy. And another piece of fun trivia is that the detective office where John works is actually this building right here. They filmed it in my loft and when I found out that it was American Horror Story, I flipped out. If you follow me on Snapchat, then you might have witnessed my flipping outage. So this season is definitely worth a watch. If one of the previous seasons made you lose faith in the show, I would tell you to watch this episode and give it another chance, and I'm so excited to see what they have planned out in future seasons as well. And my last favorite is X-Files. You probably already know what it is. If not, please Google it right now because you need to know. It's a cult classic that I watched growing up, but I watched them in bits and pieces around the age of 12, so I couldn't really put a cohesive plot together, and I also didn't know exactly what was going on in every episode. So I'm giving it a rewatch, and it is is so good. It is gold. And mind you, first season starts in 1993, so the graphics are super laughable, but it doesn't take away from the plot and my favorite, Spooky Mulder. And that concludes my favorites. Thank you so much for sticking around with me. I wanted to thank every single one of you for staying subscribed and staying tuned during these random hiatuses I've had. Also, I do Snapchat every day, including hauls, tutorials, and anything else you would see on YouTube. So go ahead and snap this barcode or enter this username here if that's your fancy. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye!